Welcome in to NFL on 365 Sports. I'm your host, Grayson Greenhafer, and we are going to continue our NFL draft preview season. Uh, today, I'm gonna talk about the New York Giants, uh, their potential draft strategy. April 28th, it's coming up, it's right around the corner. So I'm gonna talk about some of the guys that they might end up taking. I'm gonna go through probably uh, the first three rounds of draft picks for them, talk about some guys who'd be good fits for them as well. Um, and just kind of what they need to address with draft season right around the corner. Um, obviously, this is a big year for them. They have to figure out, is Daniel Jones their guy? Are their wide receivers that they spent a bunch of draft capital and money on really going to pay off for them um, this year? Lots of questions, but also I think they have a lot of answers because they have a lot of draft capital going forward. They just need to make the right picks. So starting off, Pick number five, um, this is a great spot to be because I think the Giants are going to get one of the top offensive linemen in the class at pick number five, maybe the top offensive lineman in the class. Um, and that's a great spot to be in. The Giants really need to find a way to run the ball more consistently. Uh, they have Saquon Barkley. Who knows for how long, but right now they have Saquon and they need to be able to run the football and they need to be able to protect Daniel Jones to figure out what they have in him. Um, so here, my my top offensive line prospect and the guy that I think Giants fans should want is Evan Neal, uh, the right tackle out of Alabama. He can play left tackle as well, um, but I think with Andrew Thomas there, he's going to play right, let Andrew Thomas play left, and they're going to have kind of their bookends at tackle. And that's a great spot to be in. If you can protect your quarterback on the outside, you got to feel pretty good about your chances to take deep shots downfield and also be able to run the football a little bit better as well. So I really like Evan Neal um, there would be a great fit at pick number five. Moving on to pick number seven, this is an upside pick for me. And I, I don't even know if if this guy's going to last to them at this point. He's been such a riser in this draft process because of his ceiling. And that's Trayvon Walker, the defensive end out of Georgia. I mean, he's just a freak show. 6'5", 272 pounds. He ran a 4.5140, a 4.32 shuttle, and a 35 and a half inch vertical at 272 pounds. Just remarkable. I mean, a physical freak who could come in and really change the outlook of the Giants' defense and especially their pass rush situation going forward. He doesn't have the career production that a lot of guys have, but his upside is just, it's hard to not look at and go, man, this guy can absolutely be one of the best pass rushers in the NFL. So I think the Giants take a risk there. They take a shot on Trayvon Walker and give them an opportunity to, to have an all-pro type guy at defensive end. So now you've loaded up. You've already started addressing both fronts uh, on the offensive line, defensive line, which is a great start with these picks at five and seven. Uh, moving on to pick 36 in the second round, uh, I like them going cornerback here. I think Kyler Gordon out of Washington makes a lot of sense. Uh, Kair Elam out of Florida would be uh, kind of my favorite pick there, but I don't think he falls this far. So they take the best cornerback available, and that's Kyler Gordon out of Washington. Would be a nice pick for them, helping their secondary continue to bolster that defense uh, that does need some help. They played good in stretches, but weren't consistent overall uh, throughout the season. Moving on to their next pick at pick 67. Uh, this is where I think they go tight end. Uh, Greg Dulcich out of UCLA. He's a really intriguing option. They clearly want a tight end who can be impactful. They tried it with Evan Ingram. Didn't quite work out, uh, but Dulcich gives them something in the passing game. And 1,200 yards and 10 touchdowns last two seasons. He's a red zone threat. He's a threat over the middle of the field which is something I, I do think they really need. Uh, he can block well enough, be serviceable in that department as well. And I think he would just give them another weapon offensively um, to take the pressure off Daniel Jones. You know, a lot of people have talked about these wide receivers that they've brought in, but it hasn't really worked out and those guys haven't stayed healthy. But if they can stay healthy, you bring in a, a solid tight end, they could take a big step forward on the offensive side of the football. And then finally, at pick 81, uh, I really like the safety out of Maryland, Nick Cross. Uh, he tested really well. He'd give them a nice option next to Xavier McKinney. His five interceptions in his career uh, had 66 tackles a year ago, so he's not afraid to um, 
get up to line and hit somebody and make a play in the run game. So him and McKinney, I think, would give them a solid option in the secondary at the safety position. They already added Kyler Gordon in this mock as well. So they're really addressing the defensive side to go along with finding a very high-end tight end, as well as, in my opinion, the best offensive lineman on the board as well with Evan Neal. So some of the other great fits that I think would match kind of what they're looking for uh, defensively and just in the draft in general. So I think Kyle Hamilton at pick seven would be intriguing. I think it's too early for him, though. I think you could probably trade back and get him. Um, so Kyle Hamilton at Notre Dame, an intriguing one, would fit what they need, but I think it's too early at pick number seven to go with him. At pick number five, uh, if let's just say you know, one of the teams ahead of them takes Trayvon Walker, then that could push Kayvon Thibodeau, the pass rusher out of Oregon, to them at pick number five. I would take Thibodeau there. Again, I think he'd fit really well. Kind of similar to Trayvon Walker. I just prefer Walker uh, because of the upside. I think he's even better than Thibodeau. Uh, And then finally at pick number five, if Evan Neal gets chosen ahead of that pick, then they got to move on to their second option on the offensive line. Or maybe they like this guy more than Evan Neal, which some people do uh, believe that Ikemi Konkwu out of NC State is actually better than Evan Neal. I wouldn't go that route, but I understand why people feel that way. So he could also be the pick at pick number five as well. As far as trading opportunities, it's really intriguing with the Giants because when you have pick number five and seven, those are very high value picks. And especially with the guys in this draft, the way that they kind of fall, I think at five and seven, you're getting really, really high-end quality guys at high-end positions as well, whether it's pass rush or offensive line. So if they were to trade, I could see them trading down, try to build up on some more assets, which I think they could get a lot for especially pick number five, maybe even for pick number seven as well. So maybe they trade down, but I don't see them trading up. Um, I just can't imagine them packaging too many picks to, to trade that far up to where it's a big difference between pick number seven and pick number four or something along those lines. So I'm not necessarily sure I see them trading up, but trading down for sure a possibility for the Giants. So that's pretty much it. That's the draft strategy for the Giants. That's kind of the direction I see them going. Great opportunity here to bring in two very high quality guys who could be all pros at pick five and seven and great opportunities to add depth to multiple positions in the secondary and potentially a tight end as well. But for Grayson Grudick, this has been NFL on 365 Sports.